Thank you so much, Honorable Warioba, for joining us in this conversation. Um, we're having this conversation as part of an ongoing international conference on shaping and interpreting transformative constitutions. Perhaps you can give us a very brief account of the stage that Tanzania is at with its current constitutional reform process. Well, for the last two years, we have been in the process of uh, preparing for a constitution. A commission was appointed. It worked for about two years, produced a text, a draft constitution, which has been submitted to a constituent assembly. That constituent assembly began meeting in February. They adjourned in, uh, in April. They are going to resume in August. If they can adopt that draft, then there is, it will be taken to the people to be approved by referendum. That's where at that stage. But we started first by getting the views of the people. The commission traveled all over the country, held open-air meetings, got the views of the people, and then also it got uh, the views of uh, institutional stakeholders like political parties, NGOs, and so on. And it made the first draft. This first draft was referred back to the people. Uh, this time they had constituted themselves into local assemblies and they looked at the draft article by article just to satisfy themselves that what they had expressed has been taken into account into the draft. After that, again, we took, we received submissions from institutional stakeholders and this time the number was big. The first time we had about 184 institutions. The second time we had 614 institutions submitting comments on the draft. Uh, we considered the uh, comments, revised the draft, and that's the draft which has been submitted to the Constituents Assembly. Um, what are some of the key challenges that are currently facing the process? Well, the challenges now, because the Constitution, well, the, the Constitutional Commission drafted the, uh, uh, produced the draft on the basis of the views that we received from the people. And those views in certain areas demanded drastic change from the current position. Uh, one of them is, for example, the relationship between the state organs. Uh, right now, the uh, parliament, parliament is such, the president is part of parliament. But there are strong views that we should separate the functions of the executive from that of the legislature. In the other ways, they wanted a parliament which does not include government ministers. So the ministers should not be members of parliament. So you have a presidential system where the president has his ministers, but those ministers don't sit in parliament. Now, since independence, while well, ministers have been drawn from members of parliament, and since those who are uh, discussing this, they find it is a drastic change. So that is one area. Uh, secondly, uh, the area of the executive power of the president. The president has enormous powers. The, from the views of the people, they said, no, those powers should be trimmed. And in certain cases, the president should exercise those powers on advice, not just pure discretion. We have made some recommendation of that nature. But I, be, I think the biggest issue that has uh, listed controversy is the union question. Right now we have a structure of two governments. Uh, because of the problems and from uh, what the, view, uh, the people uh, suggested, we have recommended that we move to a federal system. Now that has co caused a lot of controversy uh, to the extent that uh, I think midway, uh, some of the members of the Constituent Assembly walked out and they haven't gone back. But we hope that uh, in August when they resume, the Constituent Assembly will be full and they can continue to scrutinize the draft.
With regard to the issues of human rights that are contained in, mm -hmm. in the draft constitution, mm -hmm. we have um, seen there are quite a number of provisions that have clawback clauses, mm -hmm. where they provide for a right, but at the same time, mm -hmm. there are certain limitations to those rights. Mm -hmm. um, and in some instances, there are rights that are non-derogable. What are your comments on that? Well, we, we saw that, and I think a lot of people, when we were, uh, we were collecting the views of the people, they pointed out that, that yes, we have a bit of rights, a lot of uh, rights have been included in the Constitution, but most of them have clawback uh, clauses. And we considered that, we considered that, and in most cases, we have removed uh, the uh, claw, uh, posi uh, uh, clauses. For example, the right to, uh, we had in the Constitution, every citizen has the right to stand for election, uh, but uh, the, that right has been limited by adding that he should be nominated by a political party. So independent candidates were, uh, were not allowed. We have removed that. Uh, but more, I think we are, what we have done, apart from that, we have added new rights in there. Uh, some of the rights which have been recognized internationally, New conventions come up since the constitution was uh, uh, adopted. We have included uh, rights for women, for children, disabled, the elders, and so on. Even the youth, we have included that. We have we have expanded that area of human rights. But the main concern of the ordinary people related to implementation of the rights, they say yes, these rights are in the constitution, but they are not implemented fully. And when they are violated, we don't have a mechanism which can really enforce implementation of these rights. So we have, we have tried, at least we have strengthened the powers of the Human Rights Commission uh, in order to assist in the implementation of human rights. Thank you very much for Thank that. Um, do you think that generally in the spirit of Pan-Africanism and um, because we have all assented and signed to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights that it would be necessary to have a standard when it comes to the Bill of Rights and um, what is contained in each of our country's constitutions? Yeah, I, I know I know there are differences, but our efforts should be, really, as well, when it's not only the uh, Charter of Human and People's Rights, but even the international covenants, in, including the declaration itself, we should be moving closer. We know the differences in our societies, but it's more important for us in East Africa. Since we are moving towards a federal system, I think we should try as much as possible to harmonize our legislation, even uh, regarding human rights. Mm. Okay. Any more comments? No, I, I think, <laughs> well, I have enjoyed, I have enjoyed the conference. It yes. has been very useful. Yes. Uh, as I said when I was talking, said if we manage to adopt a constitution, we will, uh, we will need a, such a conference in Tanzania mm. to help us in order to interpret and shape it for the future. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you.